Saturday morning. Uh, it's probably about 10 o'clock. Zach has gone for a city run and it's a very, very cloudy, dreary day. But it's very appropriate. There we go. I'm wearing my camp shirt because we're going to meet Felissa Rose today and I think we're going to meet Jonathan, both of them from Sleepaway Camp. So that'll be really cool. I'm glad to be dressed for comfort and I am ready to get today started. There's Sky. How weird. She's so little. Zach is drying his hair, and then we are going to get food, and we're going to start our adventure. I'm so hungry. And this vlogging in public thing is really weird. I've only been made fun of once so far out loud. But you gotta do what you gotta do. <laughs> Remember, right? <laughs> it's bright out here, y'all. Let's go, babe. Yay! This is an exercise in not being afraid that everyone sees me talking to a camera. He was only 11. 
seven years older than I was. I, I, actually, I was 12 at the audition. And we got along, and he just wanted me to sit and stare. I did. And then he said, pretend you're eating a chocolate bar. And I did. And then they called me back and said, is it okay if she wears a penis? <laughs> <laughs> and my mom was like, of course. <laughs> of course she can wear a penis. It's my baby. <laughs> and here we are today. That's good parenting right there. <laughs> and then that brings in the bullying. You know, and that's a big thing. I mean, the way she's abused by these people around her is terrible. That's the monster in the movie. You know, the way she's picked on. And the way he um, kind of created that world of like that sweet girl, the whole movie, you're feeling something for her. And I think everyone at the end is cheering. It's like, yeah, you got them, you know? You got them. The revenge factor is tremendous in the movie. And I think we all, I can speak even for my husband, he was bullied severely in school, and I think that's why he took such a, took this movie to heart. And it's, you know, it's camp, it's cheesy, it's got all that, you know, the baseball scene, Jesus Christ. Ross <laughs> <laughs> said he wrote the beginning and he wrote the end, and I said, and you filled it in with a baseball scene? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> I'm sure you did. Um, but I think that's really, you know, aside from the homoerotic undertones and the fact that she's trying to figure out her, you know, herself, like what, you know, is she straight, is she gay, is she transvestite, we haven't seen any of that. So there's a, a whole mashup of so much and it speaks volumes to all of us. You're like, wow, at the end you're going, holy shit, I have to watch that again because she's on the beach and she's thinking about her own sexuality and her dad with the man and the, it's like, um, and I think that's what sticks. There's a lot to it. It's not just somebody's wearing a mask chasing us in Camp Crystal Lake. Well, and that's, yeah, that's uh, I, I, <laughs> Friday the 13th show. Um, I, I've said this before, it's the only film I can think of of that era where the, the killer is synthetic. Is she a villain or you know, victim? Yeah, we don't, you know, even at the end, is she, Really bad. I mean, and was Ricky part of it? Because I'm about to say, because Ricky I has think, a chance. So, <laughs> I, think, I think Ricky was a part of it. Because how he grew up knowing his mom did that to the cousin. Not really. I think there is definitely a lot of stuff regarding Sleep Boy Camp in the works. And I will say, I've had a lot of phone calls going on just recently, even in the past couple of days. So, you know, it would be really nice because I think everything else has been remade and rebooted and, you know, new installment. And I, so I think there's something coming down the pipe. Yeah. So, yay! Well, like, in your opinion, what happened to your characters? Like, to y'all? Like, obviously, the end of the movie, it's not like you can go back to school. No, she's got <laughs> Failed 
to like, dis you know, discuss that because we're all about, she has a penis, she's a boy. Yeah, nobody um, remembers that there's a head. There's a head <laughs> that rolls out of my lap. And it's, de and it's dangerous and close to you. Um, I think she definitely, she got treatment, and then I think she came out. Both well, what was the thing you used to tell me one time? I can't even remember about that there was another Angela that I could sums. No, I think that, I, I, I actually do believe that both Angela, that Angela yes, and Peter are both alive. And I think that in return to Sleepaway Camp, that's the real Angela. Which is why Ricky, well, thinks, which is it, why Ricky thinks the original Angela is in a mental home. <laughs> I'm confusing myself now. Somebody Thank you. you. Somebody, Somebody call 911. <laughs> <laughs> There's Felissa and Jonathan. They are cute. Here's our cute little camp set up. Let's walk over to them and get a picture with them now. I'm not even joking. Angela and Ricky and Zach. Hi. I'm not going to talk about how I'm left handed this time. Oh yeah, because I don't take care of my pictures, you know. That one's good, yeah. She's like, it's got a crinkle. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I don't want you to have a picture that's not okay. Right. Why, why would you want to do
this excursion. I don't necessarily think that anything paranormal will happen, but that's not why I'm going on this. I'm going on this because I love abandoned buildings, I love uh, Chip, and I love exploring creepy places. I think it's going to be really fun. You excited, babe? Stoked! And this is our weather. It's okay. I mean, it's perfect. It's perfect for ghost hunting. Because we're totally going to catch a ghost. Obviously. Because there's so many people here. We had a couple of ghosts RSVP to this event, so... Facebook. Oh, Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> We just had to move out of the way for the children of the corn to walk by us. No big deal. Children of the corn put their put their hoods on and walk down into the rain and disappeared into the night. I tried not to freak out too much, but I did. It's gonna be way too dark to film. Okay, so we're probably not gonna film during this thing because this camera doesn't. We're gonna cut it. Work well in low light. So we'll see you afterwards and tell you about all the ghosts that we saw. So I'm going to shake hands with a lot of ghosts. Very unorganized. Chip Coffee was supposed to lead it. And it was like the paranormal team, paranormal weekend led it. It was awful. Because it kept taunting ghosts and kept asking ridiculous things and almost like making them, I don't know, feel less superior than... Us. Now, we drove a long way. We traveled a long way for you to talk to us, so I think you should, Mr. Ghost. It was terrible. And then it was bourbon and craft beer tasting. We legitimately had like a half a shot. A half a shot of bourbon. There was no craft beer. It was just terrible. It, it was a real letdown, and I, <laughs> I real letdown. thought that the best part would be meeting Chip, but okay, we didn't 12. get to meet Chip. Okay, Mr. Ghost. Okay. I'm, I'm going to knock two times. And you need to knock one you, time. You can understand with your small mind to knock back once. <laughs> Let's do that. So... <laughs> James? Is your name Bob? Is there a Bob here? <laughs> is, there a, is there a Tom? Did you say Ghost Hunter Weekend? Is there Elijah? Is there an Elijah? Elijah didn't even come up in anybody's conversation. It was... <sighs> it was really... It was... It was bad. It was a big waste of bad. my time. It was just bad. We also paid $90 <sighs> to go to that. Sigh. <sighs>